Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show that shall not be named. Today, I wanted to do an automatic drawing, and I had the idea to do an experiment and just to see if I could do the outline without lifting the pen. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just doing the outline. I'm not going to do the all the contour lining as well, but after this experiment, I feel like maybe I could, so I might try that in a future video. But yeah, I'm just coming along, not lifting the pen, and just kind of blanking out my brain and letting it go where it wants, but also, you know, Interacting with the line work that already exists a little bit, right? That's how I do it anyways. But yeah, and there's my automatic drawing outline. <laughs> Here I'm coming through with the same fine nib fountain pen and just doing some contour lining here. Mixing in a little bit of automatic drawing too. I like to alternate back and forth. I've said this before in videos. I, I kind of zone out and make some shapes and then kind of snap back to reality and connect thing, connect lines together and, you know, back and forth flip-flopping, I guess. But, yeah. It's good to get back in and do another automatic drawing. I think I want to keep doing representational stuff probably more often than the automatic drawing. But I do want to still do at least one a week, I'm thinking, somewhere around there. It's good for me, too, because it, it helps me stay fresh, helps me stay relaxed. It's really beyond just honing your art skills. Automatic drawing is great for just helping you relax your mind and, and it's almost like meditation, right? It's a good, like, I feel like it's any, it, for me anyways, maybe your results may vary. <laughs> I don't want to like give medical advice or anything here, but I feel like it's 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 a it's almost therapeutic, right? Like it's something I do when I'm stressed out, I got a lot on my mind or I'm frustrated or you know, I just need to kind of unpack. I'll grab a pen and just kind of doodle. And uh you know, my problems seem to melt away for a little bit. It helps me and, uh, I don't know, think, think about them differently or not think about them for a second, uh, come back and approach things differently. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to, hard to describe for me, but definitely beneficial. But yeah, I was coming through doing some more single line type stuff through there. <laughs> It's really fun when you start doing it. It's like, it's very satisfying to just kind of not lift the, the pen off the page. You, you should try it if you haven't. <laughs> I, I took some art classes. I'm mostly self-taught, kind of, sort of. I've worked with artists and they've taught me a lot, but also I've taken a few art classes, but never like gone to like full on art school. So, but in some of my art uh, drawing classes I've gone to, they've done, you know, exercises where you you try to do like a sketch of something without looking and you don't lift the pen off the page. And I think that's kind of the idea I had there. But it was, I'm not trying to do a sketch of anything. I'm just drawing shapes, whatever feels good with my hand, you know. But yeah, here I've started the hatching. I just do single 
pass hatching. I don't do cross hatching in this one. I'm planning on doing a hatching tutorial, at least on how I approach it. I'm trying to be careful and like make sure I make a good video that's not going to teach anyone bad habits because like I said I'm not like completely formally trained as an artist. So I want to make sure I'm giving good advice before I make that kind of video. That's my kind of my hesitation with it, right? But it's also I need to figure out what I'm doing because a lot of the stuff that I do at this point kind of is intuitive because I've been doing it for so long. So I don't really think about it. Um, and, you know, people asking for me to make like a cross hatching video has kind of made me like stop and think like, oh, well, how do I even explain this? Right. And so I've been going over it in my mind, especially when I'm like doing drawings, I'm like, paying attention to what I'm doing and thinking about where I learned how to do that and all that sort of stuff. Right. So I, t I do it kind of, uh, the way I kind of approach it for the most part is I kind of imagine like a wireframe, if that makes sense over anything that's like three dimensional and I kind of shade in line with the wireframe. Um, when I make the video, I'll demonstrate it. And I think I learned to do that by actually drawing w wireframes on three-dimensional objects and then hatching over the, the drawing. So um, I will make a video that goes over how to do that kind of exercise. And yeah, but yeah, that's kind of my, my technique I use. But yeah, once you've done it for a while, you can kind of just imagine the wireframe and you don't really have to draw it in. It's not 100% accurate all the time, but <laughs> hey, it's art, right? Especially something like this where it's very like not really representational necessarily. It doesn't matter if it's spot on, right? It's just for fun for therapeutic purposes. But yeah, I'm coming along just hatching away here. This is the extra fine. I have been using the napkin a lot more lately. And what I'm doing there is the noodlers black that I'm using in this pen will it has like a little bit of shading to the ink that's where you draw a line and like it'll go from like dark to light right sometimes when you're doing hatching and cross hatching that's not really a good thing um, if you get shading on a line that you didn't want shading on it can add value can make it darker than you wanted it to be so if something like that happens, what I've started doing is I just blot it with a napkin real quick before it dries. I was, I was struggling with it and like compensating by changing the overall value of that part that I was shading before, but that was making stuff darker than I wanted it to be. So this like napkin blot technique is actually working out really well. So yeah, if you're struggling with anything like that, also if you have any like wobbles in a line or mistakes that you've made. If you blot them, it lightens it up. So they're less obvious, which is a little, a little hack, I guess. <laughs> um, if you have any not so happy accidents, you can kind of disguise them a little bit easier. If you just lighten them up a little bit. So try a napkin, I guess it's the moral of the story. Try a napkin. <laughs> I'm coming through with more hatching. I kind of alternate between hatching and I'll throw little contour lines in here and there and imagine, you know, if there's a shape, I'll imagine like that negative space being the highlight on the edge. You can create 
all kinds of shapes just with the hatching. You don't even need outlining, you know, just by leaving highlights here and there. And you know, you can create like ridges and folds and all sorts of stuff, all sorts of craziness. This uh, portion I'm working on, this kind of like, like almost like a ring around this oval shape here. That kind of whole section was my favorite portion of the drawing for some reason. I just really like the way that looked. I think it's the way the hatching kind of follows the contour, like almost like a fingerprint or something. It goes all the way around in like a circular shape. I think that looked really... Uh, interesting there and it's got some nice highlights on the top a lot of this uh, automatic drawing stuff I, I I like I like the way it looks when it's done but also I'm like I don't know kind of critical I guess I'm just overly self-critical really is probably <laughs> what it is, but <laughs> some of it, I just, I don't, I'm like, ah, I could have done that differently, but it's, I'm not even like doing anything very intentionally. So I, I just need to let go of that idea. I guess <laughs> it's kind of like, what, why are you being critical of this? It's literally uh, something from your subconscious, right? At least partially. And yeah, just doing a little shading up on the top here. And then, yeah, here I'm adding the, uh, the box, the sketchbook box around it. And with this one, I decided I wanted to fill it in solid black behind it, which is some something I don't do a ton of, but it's, um, you'll see here, I get the brush pen out and it's a very, uh, dramatic, not dramatic, but like high contrast look. I think I want to get a, uh, a paint pen or some sort of white ink pen so I can do like stars in the background and make, you know, some spaceships and stuff like that with this sort of technique, like paint it in black and then just like speckle or uh, not speckle, stipple stars in, in the background. I think that'd look really nice. I think I'll experiment with some different ways of doing it here in the future. And yeah, I'm just filling in those little gaps there too. This uh, brush pen's really nice for just doing some solid black. It's kind of a, a larger brush, so doing tiny details with it is, is a little bit difficult, but for this sort of purpose, it works amazingly. <laughs> But yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon. If you guys have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments. And I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.